Hey, it's Spuckers from our Demon Flights. It's me, Spuckers. Coming to you in this video, I am turning Benton Aliens into mechs. The first one, well, in the order I do them, is um, first Armadrillo, then I did Humongosaur, followed by Diamond Head, and then the final one I did was actually um, Feedback. A really cool alien I really like. And it was interesting for how the designs turned out. Now, we're and let's get into this video. Let's go. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Hey, it's me, Gus Stryker. I have... <clears throat> well, one of my new clients have is this kid named Benjamin. And this guy had a some type of <clears throat> unlimited power cord with him. And this kid it was more or less a watch. You could tell time and all that. But his main ability was the ability to have unlimited power within it. This thing was really interesting too. What it can do is well, like I already stated, um produce infinite energy. It's more of an arc reactor than anything. But meh. When the kid asked me if what I can do would help him, I asked him if I could see the watch. He said, I, I won't come off because it's biologically grafted to my body. And that got me thinking and I realized that since it's biologically grafted, it actually runs off its nervous system. But the thing is it has an amplifier within it. Which is very, very difficult to make. So I asked him if I could take a look at it. I, he, he said for it to shut down all defenses. And I popped the thing open. And I was freaking right. It was an amplifier. But an amplifier like I've never seen before. Using tech that had never been invented. He said it fell from the sky. So I'm guessing it's from out of space or something. Well, <clears throat> this guy has been coming to me for around 20, not 20 years, but I'm gonna guess somewhere around, actually, um, so he was wrong. So around five, six years now. This kid <laughs> had me make him mechs. I'm talking big and small, mass shifting mechs. It's a weird thing. This kid has the ability to actually um, change his shape, size, and a few other things, like his, um, they're very weak, so he had me make, um, accumulation coils in with them, too. So when I did that, it was a little bit interesting. Because the accumulation coil had to both run off his powers and the actual energies. So I had to make them to where they were only work on powers. So like a um, growing and shrinking accumulation coil. So, and, yeah, that was an interesting one to make. The first one... I will tell you about a um, growing accumulation coil I had to put into one in a second. The first one was a Drolo Arms mech I made for him. He said that his father is a plumber and he sometimes has to actually do plumbing work. So he decided to have me make him an armadillo inspired drilling mech. The thing is really tall too. The guy's around six, maybe around five foot ten, and this guy, and this mech is around ten feet tall. Very interesting. The arms and the hands of the arms form together to make the skills. So, yeah. And also, they have a jackhammer to the back of the like a plunger and rip out more ground a lot faster. Now, let's get to the next one. The second one I want to talk about is the growth of the Legend Club. Well, one of them, anyway. This one is known around town as the Humongo Mech. It's because of its standard height is around six feet, six feet, yeah, six feet, sixteen feet tall. This thing also has very, very long, big arms. It's very bulky. This guy was in this one was in the six figures. Look how big it is. So yeah, they, it was a little funky because I had to use a mash shifting tech. Which I do have access to, but it's a very difficult process to incorporate it. 
because you got each limb has to have its own because of the thing. So I had a crown. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. One in the eye, one in the chest, one in the head, one in each leg, one in the tail, and one in the jaw. Yeah, that was an interesting one. And um, his accumulation, his um, um, power core actually is um, still in his arm, but it, in the make it allows, he has some type of finger controllers that are incorporated, and he can actually move his fingers, and they will move accordingly to the finger onto the mech, which is something I do whenever I have to make a big mech like this. But not just that, I also add some nano mechs to it. So nanobots to it. So what happens is, the more, well the way they activate is, is it from him commanding them to activate, or from attacks. If you attack him, they have a chance to spawn and actually go within the mech and actually trigger him and have him start growing, which comes plays into the uh, growing cures. And that was an interesting one because he can actually shrink down, but the, he becomes slower because the energy actually gets cut off quite uh, quite a bit from the um, how big it's getting. It's known to actually get big, tall enough to reach up around 100 meters. That thing is huge. That's a lot of tech I'm surprised I can to make. There's a lot of people. Some of it is real, but it's always very expensive. Look, this guy alone I could sell to him and still be able to live off of it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll kind of strike it as more of a, a variation type of guy. I do have to pay for my protection because <laughs> just because I am all going to strike it doesn't mean I got enemies. Doesn't mean I don't have any enemies. So, yeah. Let's get to the next one. Now, what I all want to say for this movie interruption is that next up, next video is going to be the Seven Deadly Sins, the anime characters. If they were in My Hero Academia. My little brother's a big fan of that anime, so I had him give me the holy weapon. Well, not the holy weapon. The sacred weapons. And their, um, what their sin animal and their sin is. So, like, um, Meliodas, that was one of my personal favorite designs. The, um, Dragon Sin of Wrath. Just to give you an example. I then incorporated design elements from their costumes and gave them the quirk names to try to come up with their best hero names. I basically did um, some like Boar's Gluttony or some, was, it was Grizzly's Gluttony. That's what I came up with. Now let's continue this video. Let's go. Now this next one is actually a very interesting one. I think it's only around the same height as this uh, Benjamin, but the thing has a special ability. It is coated in a very near indestructible material. Something that looks like diamond. I actually had to use nanobots because of this. Because he wanted what what because what he wanted to do. What he wanted it to do was to be able to shift forms on the arms. He wanted it to be able to shift from a sword, an axe, to anything he wanted. I even added some extra ones onto the back and uh, head. It made it look like a um, giant blocky um, crystal alien, like the thing. The regular legs are the bo legs and body are your standard um, Texan titanium alloy, so that alone was a pain in the butt to make. But the entire uh, is just a metal coating around his actual hands. And the um, things are actually able to shift because of the nanobots, because of the nanobot hives all along it. It's actually, it's actually in strips, so it's a very long. They coat it to where it actually looks like a um, metal pattern, but he can cause it to shift forms. One of his personal favorites is turning to a jagged form where you can shoot them out. They do come back actually from underground and then go off with speed. 
and actually shift up into the bomb using an internal system I made for it. Because I knew he was most likely going to shoot through these things very fast. So yeah, he needed something. So, but he can also, what he can also do is actually an upgrade I made later. He can slam his fist into the ground and make a giant jagged spiral of these things. He can then lift them up using telekinesis. Well, not really telekinesis, but more of a um, transmitting power from the mech itself that can actually make these things move around to wherever he wanted them. And Neo Green Transmitter is built into that, so that's how that works. That's all I got in the information for this one. And it was a pain in the butt to make them, but <laughs> okay, I'm starting to really like it. I think I'm going to make myself one of these, too. I got, hey, I got like to make sure I have my own, okay? Don't sue me. Okay, this next one was a near impossible one to make. What he wanted me to make him was a power storage one. You might be thinking about old current striker. The thing is, it sounds relatively easy. It's just basically a battery. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. He wanted it to be able to both absorb power and also have the ability to amplify it. That right there is near impossible because I can only either do one or the other. So what I did was I had to make two mechs. I then took a um, the accumulation core core idea and just, just scrap those. I had to use amplifiers, yes. But what I also did was I took in um I took a um containment cores and then attached them to the um amplifier, but that fried it so I had to go back to the drawing board. And then I realized I could have used the accumulation core. The accumulation core were would build him power, thus making it able to contain more and more energy. But I only hooked that into the uh, container because the uh, amplifier can hold and have so much power it going through it. Like I just be able to run through like a million volts through it at once. The thing won't even fry. The only type I've been able to see it fry is around 20 lightning bolts worth of energy. So yeah. Very, very powerful. Uh, but this is another one I'm thinking about making it myself. Eh, the two mechs were actually one for myself was actually a prototype. So there was that in. But still, nearly fried itself. The reason one of the earlier tests fried itself was because um, it, the amplifier was perfectly found, but everything else was fried. Just the um, wires and the um, storage because of how much it could store. The storage cores can only hold up to around 1 million volts. And amplifiers have the ability to amplify that to around 5 times as much. So, yeah. 20 lightning bolts are worth of energy. Hold on a second. Okay, so each lightning bolt can hold. 1 billion joules of energy, that's how much is in each lightning bolt, and this thing has the ability to contain 20. That's 20 billion joules of energy. Times that by 5, so that and that, that, you get 1 million, get about, I think around, um, give me one second to do this. Yeah, you get 1 billion joules of energy, but even that's pushing it. Because if you go any more, like up to 100 and... 50 billion, it would just fry the thing. So, yeah, that's all I got for these mechs today. See you next time. Well, that's all I've got time for today's video. Hope you all like it. Until next time, subscribe to the Asia's Pokestorm or Demon's Alliance. Goodbye and peace out.